it was a pretty routine day. I mean, we just went out. It was a little rough. And um, we took my jet ski out there just just because um, it's kind of easy, quick and easy to, to do trips like that. Um, we weren't expecting really anything out of the ordinary. And, yeah, we got in the water, and there was sheep's head pretty much on every set. And that was a little early for the season. Um, I mean, you might see a couple here and there, but not as many as we were seeing. And so, yeah, we just started shooting fish and rotating on and off the jet ski. And I landed on a piling that had some abnormally large fish on it and got lucky. So like, you don't actually see any fish activity normally from the surface at the bay because it's fairly murky. You can only see a few feet in front of you. So you just kind of get calm as you can, breathe up and then make a dive. And yeah, I just ran into a big boy uh, down at about, I don't know, maybe 40 feet, something like that. I didn't have a watch on, but it wasn't crazy deep or anything like that. And I just got lucky he stuck around a lot of times in the summer those fish are on high alert so you're kind of just seeing the tail of them as they dart away the bigger the fish the smarter they are they're you know they're older they've been around they've been around the block they know what what you're up to so now yeah, is this was, fish is it like right at the piling like the column of the bridge tunnel or what where where do they hang out yeah well they hang out all over the bay the early season they're hitting that bridge first thing that's kind of like their first stop point and then as the water warms they start working their way up further and further to the bay so they're in like the estuaries like in the shallow water as well any anywhere their structure actually when i was a kid i had pet sheep's head i had them named and everything at my, i used to spend summers at my grandparents house in florida and yeah, I would just swim down the, their dock pilings and it was only like six feet of water and I would hang out down there and, and pretend these fish were my friends. <laughs> would they like uh, the same fish hang around? Sa yeah, same exact fish. So those sheep's head, um, yeah, they just school up anywhere their structure. And for some reason they like pilings and, and uh, at the beginning of the season, they, they hit that bridge and hang out there for a little bit. So they're really concentrated then, and then they disperse as the uh, water warms up. So there's less of them concentrated on the Bay Bridge, but there's still a lot. Um, and then they run up into all the all the other bridges and structure inside the Bay. Which so part of the Bay Bridge? Like, um, are, yeah, were you go. closer to Virginia Beach or closer to the Eastern Shore? Uh, I would say it was around midpoint, mid midway on the bridge. Yeah. Yeah, between the between the second and the third, halfway between the second and the third, somewhere around there. So when you go and you throw the spear, uh, how how do you? What's the technique like for that? Do you kind of aim ahead of them? How do you how do you do it? Aim for the eyes. Yeah, aim for the eyes, and you normally have a pretty good shot where you want to hit them because you, you hit them right behind the eyes. A lot of times, it's called a stone shot. So you, you're shutting them down immediately there's no fighting of the fish or anything like that it, it's basically dead there's nerves twitching but um and that's the best way to take take a fish by far when you're spear fishing so then after that you take the fish and you if you hadn't have stoned it um you would brain it so you take your knife and and stick it into the fish's brain um to, to dispatch it and then uh, once you do that, uh, I like to gill the fish. So you just run your blade around the gill plate and, and it helps bleed out the fish because you wanna, you wanna get the blood out of the fish as quick as possible. And then from there, you can um, go straight into an ice slurry. So you take a bucket of ice and put a little bit of seawater in there and it gets super cold. So it goes straight into that. So, so yeah, you, you got it on your, your jet ski, correct? So when you got this one, were you like, okay, I'm done for the day? Like, this is a, this is a big boy. Uh, what was, what is that like? I was totally content. I was just, yeah, I was good. I was like, Mike, you can go, you try and get one now. 
that big. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Um, and so you said uh, you've seen these kind of before. What helped you on this day? Um, because you said you've seen like 20 pounders before. Kind of what helped? Uh... I think just the early season, the fish are less skittish. Yeah. Less predators going after them. Cool. Um, and they're notorious for their human teeth. Like, uh, no, I tell all my buddies, as soon as my teeth start falling out, probably not long from now, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to replace them with, with sheep's head teeth. They're perfect. <laughs> Save on dentist bill. Just get me some super glue and pop those things in. And they, they taste really good. You said too. Uh, what's yeah, the, what's like, the preparation for that? I was trying to, you know, promote the, the, the nickname like Bay Snapper or something like that because we don't have Red Snapper and they're fairly similar to a Red Snapper. They're just a light, white, flaky, delicious, like very versatile, firm enough to where you can, you know, put it on a grill, but not dense enough to where it's like a tuna steak or something like that. You know, it's it's still a very light, white, flaky fish. So they're just awesome. They, I don't get bored of eating them put it that way and it's not a like a oily very oily fishy tasting fish you know do you, put anything, do you put anything on it do you fry it what do you how do you prepare it i mean we cook it every every way uh grill broil bake fry deep fry air fry i mean you can just do anything with it it's it's uh it's awesome it's how many like, people did I this mean, one feed it's your whole family say again how many uh, people did this one feed? The big one? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Easily the whole family and then some. So. And then you said you take the stock. What else do you do once you cut out all oh, the yeah. it? Uh, people are going to be like, you're insane. Especially the old tiny <laughs> fishermen there. Just like look at me like I'm crazy because I will dissect the fish. Like I will use every single piece of the fish um not a lot of the times the guts like the eggs will eat but like as far as like the stomach on the sheep's head and like the other organs we're we're not there yet um maybe we'll get there but uh yeah so like you'll take the normal fillets off the fish if you're not going to cook it whole a lot of times i'll just cook the whole fish on the grill or in the oven but um if you're not going to eat the fish whole you know take your normal fillet cuts and then all have the rib section and like the, uh, you can cook that again anyway so that's another piece so if you were just taking the fillets of the fish you're utilizing on a sheep's head at best case scenario that's like a 25 to 30 percent yield so it's it's not good to just take the fillets so yeah we'll use the breast section just cook it however it does have bones but it's bigger and um, I'm trying to get people comfortable with eating fish with bones in it and, and selling those pieces for a, a really affordable price. And cause it, it's, it's actually more tasty a piece of the fish has better flavor. Um, so doing that. And then after the, all that's taken off, take a spoon and you actually scrape between the spines of the fish and get that meat. And I use that meat for like a fish salad or a ceviche or you can even make fish cakes, or I give it to my dog. I feed my dog that raw fish and he's nine years old and he's doing great. I think it helps with joint health, coat, everything. What's your dog's name? Uh, Gator. Yeah, he's eating, <laughs> Gator is eating good. He's a what, little bull What kind terrier. of dog? Bull Terrier. Oh? <laughs> yeah, yeah Spuds McKenzie looking dog. He's a super cool, he's chill as can be, can't be bothered just needs some sun, a little bit of fish. He's doing all right. Uh, his favorite toys are rake. Yeah. And then um, what else do we do with the fish? So then after that, I go and I grind the fish with a wood chipper and I bring it out for chum when we go out offshore for blue water diving. Or we take it, grind it up and mix it with brown sugar. And that creates a, a fish amino acid is what it's called. And you can use that as a, it's food grade. You can use it to eat. Uh, I don't do that. We use it as fertilizer. So oh, wow. that's another thing. And then the skins, when you take the skin off of the fillets, 
we use that, we dry that out and uh, use that as dog treats. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you're use, really, I mean, part of your company serious. is really using every part of the fish. Yeah. We're trying our hardest to. Yeah. What other kind of fish are you uh, are selling? What's your main products? Uh, sheep's head is by far the most common fish that we get in the summertime. Black sea bass is the number one fish that we're targeting in the winter time. Um, and in between there, we're doing blue water trips when weather permits. So that's more like your Wahoo. And then the fish that's on my hat right here that I base the whole company on that a lot of people don't know about is an African pompano, which we're taking by spear. Um, so all these fish are speared? 90, I would, no, the black sea bass, we're doing a lot of hook and line in the winter. The water's freezing and they're deeper. And yeah, we're not diving in the 30 degree <laughs> air temperature weather. Um, but uh all the other fish are pretty much taken by spear. Occasionally we'll hook a, a wahoo or something like that with hook and line, but that's usually on the way to go spear fishing. Or I like to dive. I like being in the water. I don't like guessing what's down below. I want to know. I want to see it. Um, I just love being in the water. The, uh, the deeper fish off of our coast that uh, we haven't targeted yet much, I want to start hook and line fishing for there's nice grouper and tile fish and stuff like that out there that I want to also start uh, bringing in and introducing the community with. Um, and that was like the whole thing with the sheep's head, like so many residents here do not even know about sheep's head and it's a, uh, it's awesome. They don't know about it because it's not a common fish to be in the nets and the size that we're bringing in and net fishing is, is by and large the the way everyone's getting their fish um so i'm just trying to scale back and do hook and line fishing and um and a bunch of spear fishing and how many people do you have working for you or is it do you go out with a buddy when you, when have, you go uh i say we as like the royal we so um i have friends that like to go fishing but as soon as we hit the dock they scatter like roaches uh, cause they have their own responsibilities to take care of at home. And, and, um, so I got, a, I got some help, but, um, as far as like employees, no, I can't, I can't afford to have employees yet. <laughs> yeah. And real uh, quick, um, what's the rest of the year look like for you and how can people get into spear fishing? Where would you go? Um, as far as getting into spear fishing, I would say just if you feel comfortable in the water already snorkeling around and stuff like that, I mean, YouTube is your best friend. Don't set like strict goals. It's not that type of sport. It's just try to have as much fun as you can. Um, get out there and start slow, you know, start with a pole spear, shallow water and um, take it easy. And, and cause it, it, it can be dangerous. If, if you're not careful. Um, did I answer that right? Yeah. And with that, just real quick, um, when you throw the spear, you've got a line holding to it. So you pull it back, correct? Yeah, you can use a pole spear, like I mentioned, which is like the most primitive way to, to dive and spear. Um, it's basically just a pole with a rubber band on the end of it. So you're holding it tension the whole time. It's kind of like bow hunting and crossbow hunting. Like bow hunting is kind of more primitive because um, you have to draw back. And that's the same with the pole spear. The spear gun is like a crossbow. So it's, you pull the bands back and it's loaded. It's preloaded. So it's, it's ready to go. Um, so it gives you a little bit more range and it's just easier to use once you get comfortable with it. Is that the um, one I mean, that you used? Yeah. Yeah. So they have different categories. So you can, you can set a record with the pole spear too. So I'm looking to do that also, but um, yeah, the, the spear guns far more effective. Also want to say, if you're getting into this, don't ever shoot a spear gun above the water. Don't do it. <laughs> Not a good idea. Not a good idea. Terrible idea. YouTube that one. 